All aboard for a virtual tour of historic Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. The railroad came to Sault Ste. Marie in 1887, and by the 50s had passed its prime, but there was still plenty of passenger and freight activity. We start our trip to the Sioux aboard this Sioux Line passenger train. As we get close to our destination, we notice an abundance of family-operated farms. Bell's Farm, a home of dairy cows and prized Belgian horses, has been in the Bell family since 1907. Local farms utilize the railroad for transporting livestock and highly sought-after Upper Peninsula hay and grain. Upon entering Sault Ste. Marie, we see the railroad yards with the roundhouse and turntable. We're passing over the power canal for Edison Sioux Electric Company. This two and a quarter mile waterway provides power for much of the eastern upper peninsula and makes part of the city into an island. If we were to follow the tracks north into Canada, we would cross four distinctly different types of bridges spanning the Sioux Locks and the St. Mary's River. There are vertical lift, bascule or jackknife, truss, and swing bridges. Nowhere else in the world will you find this combination of bridge types in one single crossing. The first train crossed this bridge in January of 1888. To our left is West Pier, a popular site for ship watching, summer carnivals, and hamburgers. In early years, hobos often rode the rails to get from place to place and ended up camping here. Meridian Street, which parallels the railroad, was built on the Michigan Meridian. It was the north-south line used in the Michigan Survey of 1815. At the base of the bridge, there's a marker showing the terminus of the Meridian. Rounding the curve onto Portage Avenue, we stop just before Magazine Street at the Passenger Depot, where passengers still arrive and depart. From this depot, our brave soldiers said their farewells and joyously returned. The Dion Quintuplets, presidential candidates, and other dignitaries visiting the Sioux came through this depot as well. Let's look inside this meticulously detailed building. Leaving the train at the depot, we hop on the trolley and go along Portage Avenue to Ashman Street to spend the day downtown. Although there is no snow yet, Christmas is coming, and the tree in the intersection of Ashman and Spruce Street is already up and lighted. Downtown Sault Ste. Marie is a bustling place. The first place to stop is Cowan's Department Store. Leaving Cowan's, browse the smaller shops and wander down the street to Montgomery Ward. A great place for lunch is the American Cafe, whose motto is serving the Sioux since 1902. Owned since the beginning by the Gianacura family, the American is the coffee break spot for local merchants. We could spend a great deal of time at Pinnacle Hobby Shop dreaming about models to build. There are wonderful examples of model airplanes hanging from the ceiling. After lunch, we could take in a matinee at the Sioux Theater and follow up with a treat from Freed's Dairy Bar. Heading back through town, don't forget to pick up dry cleaning at Pingator's. Also located right downtown, just east of the Majestic Hotel, is the Red Owl, one of the Sioux's largest grocery stores. For those who drive into town, gasoline is available at the Clark Gas Station. Sioux Savings Bank on the corner of Ashman and Portage is just one of the banks on Ashman Street. Directly north of Sioux Savings Bank at 115 Ashman Street is the News Building, built by Chase S. Osborne in 1889. Since around 1915, this has been the office of Edison Sioux Electric Company, where bills can be paid and even some electrical appliances can be purchased. 115 Ashman will later become the Sioux Area Alternative High School and eventually the home of the Chippewa County Historical Society. Back aboard the trolley, we pass Sioux Welding, where the men are busy fabricating a trailer. Further toward the east end of town, we catch a glimpse of the original trolley bar, which is now Kane's Rink. We're running out of time today, but tomorrow we'll have an opportunity to ride along with the crew in the cab of a freight train. It's 8 a.m. and we're at the Roundhouse in Sault Ste. Marie. We can see the engineers inside getting our engine checked over and fired up for today's local switching jobs.
Good morning. Welcome aboard Sioux Line number 403. I had you meet me here early so we could get this engine. These new GP9s are way nicer to run than some of the older diesels. Well, we better get moving. One of our stops is way out west of Trout Lake, so we have a full day ahead of us. So what's our first job? We have to grab a boxcar from the yard and drop it off at Sioux Builder Supply. Hey, did you know the Cox family has owned and operated this business for several generations? They are one of many businesses in the Sioux that rely on the railroad to keep them supplied. I've been to Sioux Builders a lot, but never on a train. Another business on the spur is the Chippewa County Co-op Green Elevator, and they're waiting for a couple of hopper cars full of green. So it's back to the yard to get those. A number of businesses were built along the Edison Sioux Electric Power Canal just to have easy access to this rail spur, which runs all the way east to the Union Carbide plant. Yeah, businesses have come and gone, but we still move rail cars full of coal, propane, calcium carbide, meat, grain, building supplies, and more, all on this one spur. Thanks for letting us ride along to see railroading from this perspective. Sure, and it's nice to talk a little about local history while we're working. Okay, now for the long run out to Trout Lake. We head out of town through Algonquin and pass Northwestern Leather Company, known locally as the Tannery. The Tannery is the largest employer in the soup, employing as many as 900 people at peak production. On our way, we'll pass through Dafter, Cottage Park, Rudyard, Fiber, and some other small towns. There were a lot of stops in the steam engine days because they needed to refill the water tanks often and pick up or drop off passengers. Looks like we're getting close to Trout Lake. Yep, almost. One stop there to pick up a single gondola on the way to Fiborn Quarry. Perfect. This is a great way to see the EUP. The gondola is at the end of the spur, but it looks like we're going to be stuck here for a bit. We have to wait for a logging train to move some cars. Years ago, logging camps all across the UP had their own narrow gauge railroads to bring the logs out of the woods for transfer to the main lines. Just south of here, along those rails, was a settlement of Kenneth. From Kenneth, a logging spur ran east to the Jackson and Tyndall camp. This Jackson and Tyndall camp is a good example of one of those logging operations found in the forests of the eastern UP and northern lower peninsula. They are still using a steam locomotive known as a Shea, which works well in the woods hauling heavy loads at low speeds. Notice a unique drive system. After all the hard work of harvesting the trees, the logs are loaded into rail cars and transported to sawmills. Then it's off to the sawmill where logs are cut into boards, shingles, and other wood products. The finished products are delivered by rail to destinations all across North America. I don't know about you, but I like it here in this nice comfy GP9 instead of that old steam engine. Yes, but it's exciting to see some of the steam locomotives in action before they're retired and switched out to diesel. Well, let's get this run to Fireborn done so we can make it back in time for dinner. I'm ready. So where did the name Fireborn come from? It's a combination of the owner's names, William Fitch the president of DSSNA Railroad and well-known entrepreneur and the only governor from the Upper Peninsula, Chase S. Osborne of the Sioux. Oh yeah, 
yeah, kind of like Rayco, Richardson Avery Company. Almost there. We'll be dropping off a carload of coal and picking up some limestone destined for Algoma Steel. The coal is needed to operate the big Busiris steam shovel, and the limestone is used to purify raw iron into the manufacture of steel. There was another quarry that was connected to the local railroad southwest of Trout Lake, the Ozark Quarry, which also provided limestone to local industry. Yep. Problem is, these small inland quarries are struggling. Production is moving to the bigger ones that can load directly onto ships. Okay, all we got to do now is run these cars back to the Sioux and get them over the bridge to Algoma Steel, and we're done. This has been a great way to experience the Eastern UP. Hope you enjoyed the Chippewa County Historical Society's 2020 train production. Thanks for watching.